Good afternoon. Um, I'm your host, Mark Anthony. Welcome to uh, Demolition Live. Um, I wasn't actually planning to go live at all today, uh, but I haven't done this for several months now. I know there's a lot of you out there that seem to prefer to watch and listen rather than to read, and I understand that because I'm a, a consumer of countless videos myself. Um, my reason for being here is that I wrote a thing this morning, and I, I really want as many people as possible to be aware of it. Um, not to stroke my ego, you understand. Um, I'm quite capable of doing that myself, as anyone that knows me would tell you. The reason I want it to be spread far and wide is because of the subject matter, and that subject matter is sight deaths. Now, if I had any sense, um, this is a subject I'd be giving a wide berth right about now. Um, I've actually been fired in the past uh, over my stance on sight fatalities, and I've, be, I've been accused countless times of being outspoken on the subject as well. Although, funnily enough, I've, those that accuse me of being outspoken always seem to do so from ivory towers. I've never been accused in the same way by a sight worker that just lost a friend or by a family that's lost a husband, a father, or a son. Strange, that. But all of that is by by the by. Um, the written version of, of what I wrote this morning is called When Death is Too Familiar. Um, and since I can't think of anything better for the video and audio version, this is also called When Death is Too Familiar. Did you know that modern cruise ships have on board a temporary morgue? I must admit, I didn't. Uh, it's certainly not advertised in the glossy brochures advertising five-star dine, dining on the ocean wave whilst journeying effortlessly to far-flung destinations. It's located a long way below decks, but trust me, they do. It makes sense, I guess. Given the average age of the, the, the average cruise enthusiast, the sheer volume of people on board, and the fact that in a typical year each ship will be at sea virtually non-stop, chances are someone's going to die on board sooner or later. And let's face it, no one wants to share cocktails in the Vista Bar with the rapidly decomposing corpse of Great Aunt Ethel now, do they? I'm recounting this piece of trivia because it illustrates and encapsulates the inevitability of death on an ocean liner. An inevitability that sadly is echoed in the combined construction and demolition industries. Now, each year, when the Health and Safety Executive announces its annual accident st and fatality statistics, there is no collective anticipation that we might have made it through another year without killing or maiming anyone. There's no universal rending of garments or clutching of chests, as the latest death toll is announced. In fact, outside the companies directly impacted by a fatality, the annual stats are received and dismissed in roughly the time it takes to send an email to your re recycle bin. Now, it sounds like I'm overstating, doesn't it? But you be the judge. This morning, I received my daily email from industry news portal Construction Inquirer, a publication which, incidentally, I have a huge respect for. That email carries the news that construction deaths have risen from last year's 31 to this year's 40. And that story appears as the fourth out of six stories, just below news that canteens are now allowed to reopen under revised social distancing guidelines. Just how skewed is your industry view, and, and your general humanity for that matter, when the death of 40 workers is given less prominence than the availability of a bacon sandwich? Now that in itself would be bad enough, but 40 deaths doesn't even begin to tell the story. Those figures, for example, make no allowance for the fact that the year in which these figures were recorded, 2019 to 2020, was actually curtailed by the COVID-19 lockdown. The stats also separate out the figures for those people keep killed by mesothelioma, 2,446, if you're asked, in case you want to know, a good many of which are likely to have been exposed to asbestos in a construction or a demolition setting. And there's no mention either of the roughly one construction worker that takes his, his own life each working day. Now, surely by now, we're not naive enough to look at the official figure of 40 site deaths and think, well, at least it's less than one a week, one a week, when it quite plainly isn't. Truth is, if the mesothelioma and suicide figures were more fully interrogated and included, the chances are that the combined construction and demolition industry is actually responsible, directly or otherwise, for more than two industry deaths each working day. It would be nice if misplaced to think that the COVID-19 lockdown might have a positive impact on figures ending the 1st of April 2021, 
although the links between financial and career uncertainty and suicide might actually make the figures overall worse. But when you're pinning your hopes on a global pandemic to reduce the number of site fatalities, surely it's time to take a really long, hard look at yourself. All of which, bizarrely, uh, brings me to a 1990s action film reference that some may recall. In the movie Broken Arrow, John Travolta steals a nuclear mix missile, you know, like one does. And the term Broken Arrow, which is in the title, is explained as a Class 4 strategic theatre emergency. It's what we call it when we lose a nuclear weapon. And upon hearing this, a character responds with the immortal line, I don't know what's scarier, losing nuclear weapons, or that it happens so often, there's actually a term for it. The term sight deaths is our broken arrow. It's both scary and sad that it happens. It's worse that it happens with such frequency that there's actually a term for it. Thanks for, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening.